All right, so checking my project at the moment, what it's doing is um, it does see what the password and the confirmed password is, and it does see if they match or not. We're still a ways from creating the account and such, but at the very least, we're checking do the passwords match. Uppercase, lowercase gets taken into account as well. Very simple pop up that says passwords don't match. Okay, well, let's say the passwords do match. Uh, I'm going to put AAA, AAA, click join. The output down here simply says they do match, and other stuff is going to happen to then proceed us through creating an account. Um, but do you notice because we've changed the default behavior, these fields are still all filled in. These boxes are still um, filled in, and uh, even like when I do the password mismatch, and I click join there, passwords don't match. These fields are still filled in. Uh, the reason that that's happening basically is because way back at the beginning of our function, we said prevent default. The default of filling in a form oftentimes is that the screen is refreshed or that we're moved to another screen. So we've said prevent default. Now, the now those boxes don't empty themselves. So let's say, in addition to um, checking it here, okay, passwords don't match. We give ourselves, the developer, some feedback. We give the user some feedback. It's often helpful to empty those password fields for them to retype them. They, they cannot tell what they type because the password is hidden. So it's not going to help for someone to then be like, what, what did I type here? Let me backspace. That's still wrong. What did I type? Let's just clear those fields so that then they can try again. We're telling them they don't match. Try again. So let's set that up. Uh, still, all of this is happening in the first if block. We're dealing with passwords not matching. We're then going to deal with a few, uh, you know, half dozen or dozen lines of code of what happens if they do match. Okay, let's create the account. We'll get there. But now, uh, okay, pop up says they don't match. So we need to clear those fields. Um, we used the we used over here L in password signup val, uh, or specifically up here in the console, uh, we used val method as a way to check what is in those fields. I said earlier we can read or write with val into a field. So if we then say, OK, we need to clear out the password and the confirmed password fields, which are represented by L in password sign up. Uh, that's, the, that's the JavaScript, um, the jQuery mobile, the, the jQuery based JavaScript object representation of the HTML dot val. Quotes. Well, whatever we write in here is what will be written into that field. Without anything in the parentheses, it would just show us what's in the field. But once we start to write anything inside of those parentheses, it will write into the field. So you might say, OK, well, uh, quote, space, quote. Let's empty it. That's technically not empty. A space is not nothing. A space does take up one byte of data. A space is character 32 internally in the ASCII specification. So a space is not nothing. That's not actually emptying the field. That's nothing. Quotes with nothing in between is nothing. So now we're saying here, into the value of that input field, put nothing. So clear it out. Same thing for the confirm L in password uh, confirm sign up. Let's set the value instead of reading the value. Let's write the value, and what we'll write into it is nothing. Quotes string nothing. So then clear out the fields by writing 
nothing into them. A space is not nothing. A space does take up a space in memory, a space on screen. A person will still have to backspace that out of the way. Because technically, when we write this password, we, we haven't set our password thing to omit spaces or exclamation points. We haven't created our password input box to, to accept a minimum of eight characters. You know, our password can be cat. And as long as we confirm cat, it'll let us in. Now, cat is, cat is, cats are great, but cat's a bad password. Because C-A-T, that's going to get hacked, cracked in 0 0.0001 seconds. So uh, we're, we don't have a very smart input fields yet. Anything can be typed into them. Uh, we don't have very good validation for these things. We'll, we'll get there. But just to test this out then, uh, try that out. Uh, refresh it. Try to put mismatched passwords. Both fields should empty themselves out, as well as saying the message. Technically in order, we will see your output to the console, we will get the pop-up, and then we will get the empty fields. So that then the user sees, oh, I made a mistake, the fields are empty, let me try again. Now they match. Okay, let me test mine. You should be in the habit of pressing F12 to uh, open up your console just in case. Um, that's the first thing you want to look at before you do anything, because you might have an error first you need to deal with before doing anything. So uh, if you don't press F12 until you're actually doing something, you might be wasting your time. I had an error before anything happens. OK, no error. I'm going to sign up, put in whatever. Hopefully you're not actually putting real stuff here. That, that's, that's a waste of time. Just fill in something, and then password. QQZZ, join. Passwords don't match. Passwords are empty. Passwords don't match. Passwords get empty. Let me try that again. QQ, QQ, join. Passwords do match. This is still all filled in, which we'll have to deal with that later. But you see uh, what happens here is uh, there are some commands that will let you read a value and also write a value. And dot val is a uh, dot val is jQuery, uh, a jQuery command that we're applying to a jQuery based object. So just to make the note, dot val method, well, dot val uh, jQuery method can be used to read or write data. JQ is jQuery, so it's a command in jQuery, and it can be used to read or write data. Nothing in the parentheses, it reads. Something in the parentheses, it writes. So we'll do maybe a little bit kind of around halfway of else. Um, else is the whole part about passwords do match. Let's actually create an account. So let's jump over to the else block. All of this stuff will happen when the passwords do match. We will save the user. Okay, so this is when it matters about um, 
their um, this is when it matters about uppercase and lowercase. Uh, and this is when if the person happened to put a capital letter A in their email when they signed up, and they didn't put a, a capital letter when they signed back in later, it will say user unknown because capital A, lowercase a is different. So what we're going to do is create variables um, that deal with the uppercase and the lowercase uh, data. I'll call this temp, no dollar symbol. I'll explain why in a moment. Val in email sign up. We're going to create a brand new variable that will temporarily hold the value of the input field email in the sign up form. It's going to be assigned. Uh, it's going to be created based on, we're going to assign to it uh, what was the email that they typed, which is $L in email sign up dot val. So we've seen we can read and write. Okay, let's read again. What is the value of the um, uh, email that they've signed up with. Give me their email, basically. Give me their email, put it into another variable to work with it temporarily. I didn't put a dollar symbol here because I'm not actually using any jQuery uh, command um, like to create the, the object like I would do um, on the other lines. Um, I'm going to um, add one more thing at the end here, dot two uppercase semicolon so I'm doing two things at once here uh, give me the value of what's in that variable and then convert it to uppercase we do have the opposite to lowercase now I always thought it was weird that they capitalize that C which you know the word uppercase doesn't have a capital C but because it's two words, I guess, they do the capital. So this is a built-in command that is, that's how you write it, to uppercase. And the point of that command, that method, is to uh, take whatever we're saying and turn it all uppercase. So we have now sort of a copy of their email, a temporary copy of the value of their email, which we've turned into uppercase. Actually, not a semicolon, comma. I want to make another variable. So uh, remove that semicolon. We want another variable. I want to do the same thing with the password. Temp value. Temp val in password sign up equal to. So let's make a, a temporary variable of the value of the input field password sign up screen. Exactly the same as that, but with the correct object. Dollar L in password sign up dot val dot to uppercase. End of statement. We don't care about the, uh, the confirm password because we're already in the section of else. We already know they match. We don't have to deal with and take up processing power and memory for the confirmed password. It is confirmed. We know that it's confirmed. The one instance of in password counts for both. We're in the else block, meaning the passwords do match. So we've got here temporary copies that have been turned into uppercase note temporary copies of their email password that have been turned uppercase. Because uppercase and lowercase does matter, for your, in order for your app to have less headaches, convert it all to one case internally 
so that we can work with that. So uh, next line here, note, uh, using HTML5 local storage, we can save data to the user's device in a sort of cookie manner. So not extreme amounts of data depending on the device, depending on the browser, Android, iPhone, whatever, you can save around like one megabyte or five megabytes of data per cookie. A plain old classic uh, website cookie usually only saves like 10 kilobytes. 1,000 kilobytes is one megabyte. So this local storage thing that we're about to use is a way to save, is to store data locally on the person's device uh, either you know on their Android on their iPhone on in Chrome in Firefox we can we can sort of set a cookie with with some amount of data so um, we're gonna save the um, we're gonna save the person's uh, email and password those two things delineate an account right a person's email and a person's password so using something called local storage, we can do some very simple saving of data. Next line. Okay. Next line, uh, local storage notice the capital s dot set item so local storage capital s this is just a comment so capital l here but it's got to be lowercase l local storage set item we will eventually use get item so we're going to set some data into the person's device, and the data is their e is their email and their password. Uh, the way um, this would normally work, so um, you don't have to write this, but let's say um, we had username, comma, Victor. This is how set item might work. You know, it might be a good idea actually. Let's write that there, but as a comment, just for notes. The way this works is local storage set item. Uh, what's the name of the cookie we're saving, and what's the data in the cookie? So we can have infinite number of cookies. It's based on the person's storage. So for all intents and purposes, infinite until we run out of storage on their device. So we're going to set a cookie with a certain name and a certain data. So you know, that can be anything. We're setting username, Janet. That's who's logged in. That's the syntax of using local storage. The way we're going to use it ourselves is local storage dot set item. We're going to tie together their email and their password. So not in quotes temp val in email sign up comma temp val in password sign up we're using the person's email address as the name of the cookie and the data we're saving there is their password so in the internal system of the device we've made a cookie based on their email and the data in the cookie is their password yes 
No reason, as long as they're all consistent, either uppercase or lowercase, but I want them all to one case. So there's no restrictions for storing as a pigment? No, you can use uppercase, lowercase, or numbers. It's just that, you know, if they, e if they set their email uppercase A, and next time they try to log in with lowercase A, it'll say unknown user. So forcing it all to uppercase or lowercase will keep it all consistent and eliminate that extra issue of validation. So, um, storing the email password. I'm using um, the person's email as the name of the cookie, and then in that cookie file, I'm storing their password. So it's, it's if I had a file called passwords.txt, and in that file, I'm storing passwords. Well, this person's email address is the name of the file. And in the file is their password. So I'm saving both their password and their email into the internal storage. It is raw data. It is uncompressed data. It is you know naked data. This we don't have it at the point yet where it's encrypted and and all that good stuff. Uh, technically, if you do you know hack the, the 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 code and all of that, you could see this data as plain text. We'll address that a little later, but at the very least here, we've got a system using local storage where we are creating a user account based on their name, their email, and their password. Those two things are enough for us to start to create accounts where we get more complex to store the actual database of their 500 comics with pictures and notes and all of that. And because we're not dealing with any cloud infrastructure yet. We're not dealing with any servers. This will be fine for us at the moment because if we wanted to do this on a real server, we'd have to have a whole you know, Linux server set up with all that complex stuff and connecting to the server online and then security and encryption and all of that. So for the moment, this is a very simple way that we're going to create user accounts using local storage. Um, I want to see this in action at this point. So um, let's do it like this first. If I'm, I've been using Firefox this whole time. It's a little easier to see it in Chrome, then I'll show you how to use it in Firefox. But if you've been doing this in Firefox, let's do this in Chrome for a moment, because it's easier to see what's happening. Run this in Chrome, then I'll show you Firefox in a moment. Launch in Chrome, F12. Oh, launch your HTML, of course. F12 console. Okay, I'm going to create a brand new account. I'll do it for real this time. Victor at campus.com and password cats. I also type password cats. Join. So my output says they do match. Local storage should have happened, and the way you confirm that is in Chrome and if you stretch out that panel there on the side you have all of these tabs elements console source application in application all of the cookies that have been saved all of the advanced databases all of our local storage data this is in Chrome if you don't see this you're not in Chrome We'll look at Firefox in a moment. Open that. This file, we've saved some local storage data. Key value. There is a cookie with data. There's a cookie file with that name and that password. Again, not encrypted. It's, it's raw. There are some protections with local storage. Uh, one browser cannot view that data, so if I try to view this data in Firefox, it cannot see it. Only Chrome can see it. Only the device that created it can see it. Question. What if you're seeing your variables and not the value of the variables? I'll look at over your shoulder in just a moment. It's supposed to be... Oh, okay. Did you put it in quotes? Did you not put it in quotes? Don't put it in quotes. Oh, don't, you say don't, okay. don't quote. Yes. 
but technically it still kind of worked. You created a cookie with the name of that variable instead of what was in the variable. So no quotes on set item. If that still doesn't work, I'll be there in a moment. Um, but here in, uh, in Chrome, in a certain reserved area of the browser device, I've saved a cookie with a value. If I do another person, um, Jessica at Jones.com, password, passwords match, join. I just saved something new here. I've got a brand new account that will have its own data. I'm going to put capital V, lowercase v, passwords don't match, OK. Uppercase, lowercase, join. I've, I've saved a new piece of data. Based on this uh, next class meeting, we're going to start to use this to now to be able to differentiate who has logged in. And they will have their own uh, more complex data. Eventually, we're going to talk about these things here, index DB and web SQL. We're going to be able to save much more complex pieces of data. This is a very simple key and value pair. This one piece of data is related to this one piece of data. It's not exactly like how I said how, you know, if I type username here and password here, it's not exactly that this will say username and a list of all usernames will be attached to it. It doesn't work like that. Local storage is very basic of one key, one value, one thing, one data, connected. Eventually, when we do web SQL and such, we will then have one field of all comic names with 20 names. And then another one of all years with all years. We're not there yet. It's just two simple values. Um, so uh, we'll go this far at this point. This is a lot that we covered. I'm going to go back and do a quick little recap of things that we looked at. I'm going to put these notes, uh, my code in the folder. Uh, let me put the code in the folder right now, actually, then I'll recap it. Uh, so I'm going, to put a, I'm going to put the latest version of my code. The two versions in the folder that say temp and temp2, those are temporary. I'm going to get rid of them. And I'm going to put the latest version, 2015, or 0215, that's the latest code. To recap a little bit about what we did in the JavaScript, we've got about 73 lines of code or so so far. A lot of it is comments, so technically not a lot of, of code there, but um, very important that we do over and over. We create JavaScript objects based on HTML nodes. Um, this is an example here that I forgot to say this, but this is again just with the aesthetics. I said it in this class, right? If you tab these things over, you know, it's still going to work, but the point of that is just for it to look nice. You see that a lot that the names of these variables, no matter the length of them, people often then tab them over just so that they line up, so that it looks nice. Technically, that's taking a little bit more data, a couple more bytes and such. But then when you've got lots of variables to work with and they're all lined up nicely like that, you can read them easily. So that's optional. But we created objects of JavaScript based on HTML elements using jQuery, the jQuery selector, instead of document.getElementById. Uh, we created a function that runs when we click Join, when we submit the form. Well, all of that happens at the very end here, and the order of this does matter, and I'll come back to it. But we've got that form in the event of a submit, run a function, function sign up. So all of this time we've spent has been in that function after we've clicked submit, the join button. Then, it, then the code jumps back because the web browser is going to process it from top to bottom. Do this line, do this line, do this line. When it gets to here, it, it, it stops there, basically. It doesn't really do what's in the function until we tell it, run the function. It knows the function exists, but it doesn't do anything in the function. 
it does what's in the function here when we say when a person submits go back and then actually process line by line what happens in the function so okay the web browser comes back to the top over here and says let's go inside of the world of the function okay prevent default don't refresh the screen console output we've created variables in the function and I mentioned last time this might be uh, I didn't put it in the example that I gave you but you can do it local scope variables these variables only exist as long as this function is running when all of the code of the function processes this this code goes away these variables go away from memory except of course local storage which which is permanent but in the function, we then said, OK, let's, uh, let's go make objects based on those input fields. And again, here, just for aesthetics, you can tab these over so that they look nice. Completely optional. Other languages actually do matter, your tabs and such. I think Python or Ruby, it matters your spaces. Anyone know Ruby and or Python? No? So it matters in other languages, your tabs, actually little console output and then a lot of logic happening here if else if the passwords don't match do stuff if the passwords do match do other stuff and the first part is make a pop-up passwords don't match clear out those fields passwords do match we're still getting there passwords do match okay let's save their data let's not mess with uppercase lowercase make it all uppercase or lowercase when we come back, we'll further work with this, this local storage stuff. Um, well, I was going to say, if you want to check how this works in Firefox, let me just undo all of that. If you are curious how local storage looks in Firefox, running in Firefox, F12, you get um, a slightly different screen. You get um, storage. In Chrome, it was called application. In Firefox, it's storage. Cookies, local storage. So in, Chrome, in Firefox, you, you, you see it's something like this. There's no data, but I know I created three accounts a moment ago. I created them in Chrome. The data created in Chrome of local storage is only accessible in Chrome. The data, and it's the exact same file, the data is not accessible in Firefox. So there's some built-in safety there in that what created the device should be the only one that actually, what, what device created the data should be the only device that can view the data. There are ways to hack it, of course. But Firefox doesn't see my data. I know I created that data a moment ago. OK, I'll try again. Sign up, and this time I'll create uh, moose at hulk.com and then dogs password join. Create data, I need to refresh it. Sometimes it doesn't automatically appear in Firefox. But okay, I created a brand new account in Firefox. If I open the exact same file in Chrome, that data shouldn't transfer over. doesn't good so the different devices do not read or the different browsers do not read the data for security but this data is stored somewhere internally in the in the browser and all of that was local storage right there that's where we're at at this point we'll, we'll have some lab time when we come back next time well now that we know we can save some data that is permanent we can work with it uh, there, there is ways, of course, to delete the data. You might see, uh, for example, selecting that cookie, and then there's a delete button there in Chrome. There's also to delete over on Firefox. Select the data and uh, right-click, delete. In Chrome, you can also click on the top level of... Oh, not, not here, never mind. But there's a way to delete the data. Uh, we have deep freeze, so that's going to take into effect. When we come back next time, this data will be gone. 
Uh, that's if like the person completely deleted their app, your app from their device. It's going to be gone. So this data is permanent until they ultimately delete it. And we're going to use that to create accounts.